Good afternoon. How are y'all doing today, Empire Newers? Welcome back to our podcast. I am new money, about to be old money, Nicole. And we are excited this week to bring you the weekly updates in crypto news. So let's get started. So, so much has happened already in the first half of March, but we're going to talk about the remaining parts of this month, okay? And then we'll talk about April next month because we just have so much happening this week and next week. So on this Sunday, on March the 17th, SEPA actually did complete their rollout. So if you remember, uh, one of our podcasts that we did talk about last year in November for the ISO 200 2022, uh, 222 rollout, on November 19th, pretty much the entire world was able to do that, except for uh, the European Union, pretty much that area there. And so specifically, it's called SEPA, which is Single Euro Payments Area. They were not able to successfully do the rollout. They were having some uh, technical challenges. So it was in their best interest to hold off on that until 2024. So that was actually completed this past Sunday on March the 17th. So you know what? We'll stay tuned to see if everybody is ready. Everything is a go because it really does seem like it. Now, what's going to happen tomorrow, uh, March the 20th on Wednesday? So we actually have um, our Federal Open Market Committee, which is called the FOMC. They will announce their monetary policy decision at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So for those who are in Central uh, Time Zone like myself, it'll be tomorrow at 1 o'clock p.m. But we definitely want to make sure that we stay tuned to what is happening you know, as you know, as of last year, they were talking about uh, cu um, uh, cutting interest rates in 2024. Now, that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> you know, right now, they just have uh, left everything as is. And it really does sound like they will continue to leave everything as is uh, as well uh, for, for this particular session. And um, but. I want to make everybody aware of what's taking place on tomorrow. So let's look at this really quickly, get a little bit more information about these interest rates. Because as you know, right now, people are really hurting from these high interest rates. They went on a rampage for like over a year and a half, just upping these interest rates. People are really struggling when it comes to high interest rates with their mortgages, cars, everything. So uh, from the Fed perspective, you know, they do have fears that high interest rates may trigger a recession which is historically typical. Because of this, the Fed is watching the jobs market closely for signs of weakness. Solved job numbers could suggest a recession is coming. So let's go back up to that first line there that there are also fears that high interest rates may trigger a recession. Yeah, we already have high interest rates. And I like how they say may trigger a recession, like we're not currently already in a recession. So I hate to give you guys a spoiler alert, but we've been in a recession since um, July of 2022. You know, I think they just don't want to scare, you know, people. But uh, personally, I think we're in a silent depression because we've already been in a recession, you know, since the uh, since mid uh, 2022. And so they said because of this, the Fed is watching the job market closely for signs of weaknesses. Um, I want everybody to go to do uh, dailyjobcuts.com. You know, again, they're implying that there's no weaknesses at this point when it comes to the jobs. Well, I really don't know what data that they're looking at. Even they have been contradicting themselves by saying that un unemployment is the lowest that it's been. But then, you know, we have all these people who are applying for unemployment insurance, you know, also on dailyjobcuts.com. It's a really great website because it does tell you all of the companies that are, you know, laying people off, which is really in the thousands, I mean, tens of thousands, it's really sad. Uh, and then also it talks about the store closings. You know, we just heard about, you know, family um, uh, dollar, which is Dollar General, I believe, or Dollar Tree. They just closed a thousand stores or will be closing a thousand stores. So, you know, they wouldn't be doing that if the economy was doing phenomenal. And those people, of course, are going to get laid off. So, you know, I just I think it's interesting how they're saying that, um, you know, they're looking for the signs of weakness. The signs of weakness are all around us. 
soft job numbers could suggest that recession is coming. So again, going back to this recession, you know, I just thought this was very interesting. Let's take a look at how we define a recession because, you know, historically, we've always known that a recession is deemed a recession uh, when two consecutive quarters of negative growth uh, happens. That's just what we've always known it to be. That's how it's always been defined and determined. Now, all of a sudden in mid-2022, that was changed. And I was very interested as of to why that was. So if you continue reading here, a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization called the National Bureau of Economic Research determines when the U.S. economy is in a recession. Okay, so the NBER is the committee that determines. And they're making and they're made up of eight economists, okay? And they're supposed to be bipart uh, bipartisan, okay? Or it's just say nonpartisan. Well, okay. Well, one thing that's very interesting too is that they have eight economists. Well, what if what happens if four economists say that we're in a recession and then the other four say that we're not? How do they break that tie? I would love to know that. To me, it would just be common sense to have either seven or nine. I wonder why they chose eight. All right. But let's look at this even further. So I wanted to go and find out more about this NBER because I've never heard about them. Like every time they talk about interest rates, they never bring up this particular committee, you know? It says in the United States, the private National Bureau of Economic Research, you know, maintains a, a chronology of the beginning and ending dates of U.S. recession. So that's fine. Now let's skip to here. I was like, okay, well, you know, if it's just not about the two, uh, two consecutive quarters, uh, then what, what else goes into their consideration? Well, this is it right here. It not only includes GDP, but also employment, income, sales, and industrial production to analyze the trends in economic activity. And while all of those sound very well, you know, sound good, all of those uh, numbers and figures can be manipulated very easily, right? And we've already seen that the, the data, especially for unemployment, uh, or should say employment, has already been manipulated, right? Because it doesn't even add up to what we see in our everyday lives. So, you know, I'm just not that excited about how they are determining if we are in a recession or not. I know they always um, say that if, you know, uh, your neighbor loses their job, then we're in a recession. If you lose your job, then we're in a depression. And like I said, I think we're personally already in a silent depression. This is an election year. So, of course, I never want to say that R word recession because we want to make it seem like everything is doing well. But I just want everyone to just use their common sense and look around you. You know, I know personally in my city, I've never seen homeless homelessness like the way that it is. I've never seen people on different street corners. I'm talking about families with little kids. It is getting really out of control. And I've never seen this, not even in uh, 2020 during the uh, pandemic. So, or even in uh, 2008 to about, you know, 2012, you know, during the, the Great Recession. So to say that we're doing great when what we see today has never been seen before, um, I just wouldn't even, I don't think that's correct. So let's continue. So definitely um, keep your eye out for this Wednesday when it comes to the interest rates. Next on our list, uh, March the 22nd, Automated Market Makers, AMM goes live. We're so excited about this, you guys, especially for all my XRP fans out there. Woo, okay. Um, so we're totally pumped up. This was actually supposed to go live, or I shouldn't say go live. We were hoping that it was going to go live on February 14th on Valentine's Day. That was gonna be my Valentine's Day present to myself, but you know, it didn't happen. So uh, they did not reach over 80% of the vote in favor of going live. So now that they have, it is gonna go live this Friday, March the 22nd. Uh, we will be able to see the utility being used this Friday. So no one ever wants to say that there will be uh, you know, a price bump or anything like that because we have, had plenty of good news, especially all throughout, you know, 2023 and nothing really changed with the uh, the price of XRP. But, you know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this will actually do something very major because, again, we're going to see this go live. You know, it's just not all talk anymore. You know, we're actually, uh, this is something that we can all see globally. So, yes, yeah, so I'm pumped up about it. You know, we'll definitely bring you more information, but this is a really great way 
uh, for you to not have to sell your XRP, which we all know is going to be very, very valuable in the near future, you know, I, I believe. But for sure, you know, by uh, 2026, 2030. So you want to make sure you don't sell all your XRP with your digital assets. I just don't like people just to think about it as crypto, which I know that is the term for it. But when you say crypto, it's like, oh, I'll just buy a movie ticket, you know, with my XRP or I'll buy a T-shirt. No, these are actually digital assets. So I want you to start thinking about retirement, generational wealth. You know, this is a way for you to actually even generate passive income when it comes to AMM. So think larger than what uh, a lot of people have you thinking about when it comes to digital assets. Next is March 22nd. So look at this. If you guys are noticing, there's a lot that's happening, guys, on March 22. Okay, 322, 22, 22, 22, I mean, it's crazy how much is happening. So 22nd is going to be a very important date for March. The next thing we want to talk about, this is highly important because I think it's getting downplayed a lot this week. Uh, the partial government shutdown. So as we know, uh, the government, uh, Biden, along with Congress, were able to pass the first six funding bills by March 8th to keep the government open, right? So they didn't shut it down. Congratulations. We're excited about that. But a lot of people think that was it. They think, hey, we're good for another 30 days, 60 days, whatever. They're not talking about it. They think, okay, great. They signed everything. We're good. No, we're not. We still have an additional uh, remaining six bills that need to be funded, um, if not, the government will shut down. So I want us to talk about those um, bills because it's, I, I don't know. I, I pray that it doesn't get shut down this week, but what we're discussing here as far as these remaining six bills are very contentious uh, in a divided country. So United States government partially funded for fiscal year 2024, potential effects for immigration. So this is a really great article, KPMG article by both Elizabeth and Nashroth. So definitely check this out. I just want to give them credit for this because this was a really great um, article here. So just we're going to skim through this very quickly so you can see the magnitude of where we are. So I'm going to just drop down to here. Uh, let's see here. Congress has until March the 22nd, 2024 to pass the six remaining appropriations bill which include funding for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, DHS, the U.S. Department of Labor, DOL, and the U.S. Department of State, DOS, to fully fund the government for the same time frame. And then I say, why does this matter? Well, all U.S. immigration-related programs under the DHS, DOL, and DOS are funded, look at the expiration date, you all, March the 22nd, 2024. So if they are unable to get these remaining bills passed, guess what's going to happen? They're not going to be able to stay open. Okay, so to avoid a shutdown, the remaining 70% of U.S. government agencies and programs that are only funded until March 22nd, they have to get this done. All right, other federal agencies and programs with expiring funds include the military, health, and education, so we have a lot of important stuff that's happening here. And look at some of these uh, you know, potential consequences if they don't get this funded. Well, the DOL, all DOL immigration-related processes would be suspended if the government were to shut down, okay? Um, notably, the flag system used to electronically file the LCAs, PWRs, and PERMs, you can read about it at the top to see what those are, would be offline during the shutdown, so, you know, no, nothing is going to take place right there. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. It is expected that the U.S. CIS will continue regular operations in the event of government shutdown, okay? However, any U.S. CIS families that require a DOL labor condition application, nope, can't be filed, can't resume right at that time. Visa processing. Uh, this is interesting, too. It says, uh, depending on the length of a potential shutdown, visa processing could be impacted due to reduced consular staffing and or limited hours of operation, okay? Customs and border protection, that is huge. They protect our borders. Uh, CBP employees are considered essential government personnel. As such, enforcement of exit entry border processes would continue during a shutdown, but it is expected that there would be limited availability of certain additional CBP services Example would be I-94 corrections and some of the stuff I'm going to have to even research 
more as well. I've never heard of I-94 corrections. E-Verify. The E-Verify system would not be available during a U.S. government shutdown, but employers would be, excuse me, would not be relieved of their obligations to complete the Form I-9. I know what the Form I-9 is. So if you're an employer and you're hiring people right now, you might want to go ahead and wrap this up by March the 21st, okay? Because the 22nd, you know, you're still going to be responsible for uh, verifying that everything is true and correct, but how would you do that if the system is going to be potentially down, right? Why do I think it's going to be down? Because immigration is um, a partisan issue. It just is what it is, especially with everything that's happening right now within our country. It is so divided. You know, a lot of Americans do feel slighted that the red carpet is being rolled out for non-citizens. And as you can see here, there's so many things tied to this. And one thing that's very interesting as well, of course, there's a lot of Americans who are behind the scenes when it comes to um, helping out of a, a lot of immig immigration issues. So, you know, if this does not get passed, well, guess what? They are uh, potentially not going to be working. So I wanted to show you this here as well. Let's see if we can get those numbers. There they go. Look at this. Millions of federal and military personnel will be affected by the shutdown, including about 60% of civilian federal employees. At least 625,000 workers, mostly civilian defense department employees, could be subject to furlough. At least another 725,000 civilian federal employees, mainly in the departments of Homeland Security and Defense, could have to continue working, but not get paid until the shutdown ends. I believe it was, was that the 2014 shutdown? Man, it was crazy. Was it the 2014 or 2010? I don't even know. I feel like we shut down twice. I'm gonna have to look that back up too. But I remember people were very upset, especially TSA. Honey, they were letting everything come through on those planes. They were like uh, working and not getting paid. So can you imagine the low morale uh, that would happen if you had to work and not get paid? And just over 2 million military personnel, including active duty and selected reserve members could also have to work without pay. So, you know... I don't know. I really don't want, you know, Americans not having to get paid during a shutdown. But I also do feel that something needs to change with uh, uh, what's happening on the immigration standpoint, because Americans are losing. We're, we're continuously losing, right? Uh, getting the short end of the stick. So that's why I don't know, you guys. I think that it could uh, very well be a shutdown this weekend. So just uh, make sure you have everything you need, have everything paid up, okay? Uh, just don't be dependent on a March 31st check or April 1st check. Just make sure you have all your food purchased, water purchased, uh, any type of medical supplies. Yeah, just make sure you are good to go, okay? So the next thing that I want to talk about here is the March 22nd, again, another hot day, the SEC Ripple case. Okay, so we already have some great things happening with Ripple already with the automated market makers that's going to go live on March the 22nd. And then now also on the 22nd, it's the SEC's turn to file its brief regarding remedies. Now, this was actually supposed to happen two weeks earlier on March the 13th. However, you know, they did request an extension, so they will have to present this to the courts on March the 22nd. So in this briefing, they should be including their uh, tab, if you will, of how much they want Ripple to pay, which in my opinion, it should be zero dollars because you know uh, everything was determined that's not a security. So why should they have to pay anything? But you know how things go, they may pay, I don't know, 20 million, 30 million, 40 million dollars and call it a day. And if that's something as low just like that, Ripple might as well just write a check so we can get this Bitcoin having going, baby, because I'm telling you, once this case settles, all right, everything is just going to be up, up, up. Just like how last year on July 13th, once they deem uh, the XRP was not a security, same day, it doubled. So can you imagine uh, the price, you know, how the price increase would be if they just went ahead and wrote a check and settled this thing? Pretty amazing. So I get excited just thinking about this. And, you know, another thing we're having to think about, too, um, on March the 28th, and I'm going to come back to the Gold Coast. I know that's on the 22nd, but I want to end this live with, with a bang, right? With something very positive. 
But let's talk about Sam Bankman free because he's not positive. And, you know, he did a lot of wrong to a lot of to FTX make contributions uh, to clients here. So let me do this. He allegedly we have so many um, ads, money. you know, there. But yeah, so anyways, I wanted to share with you. Originally, he was facing uh, up to a maximum sentence of 110 years behind bars because he literally stole billions of people's dollars, you know. And so 110 years initially is what they were saying but you know let's look up here and see what his lawyers are trying to do now they're literally trying to get his sentence reduced to a five and one fourth to six and a half year prison term and they said that would be appropriate you know why because all the ftx clients most of them are going to get their money back so you know he didn't he, well, he didn't really set out to steal their money so because of that you know he only needs five to six years in prison wow <laughs> I mean, does this not sound or spell privilege to you? Wow, that's just amazing that you could just do do that and everything's okay. Well, I want to sh share with you with this because I was like, okay, that's inter interesting that they said most people would uh, get their money back. So, of course, you know me. I'm like, let me go check that out. Let's go see if we can fact check that. Are most people going to get their money back? Let me give me one moment because we have all these ads on here. Which I'm not mad at the ads, you know, hey, people have to make their money, all right? So if you see anything on here you want to patronize, I, I don't endorse anything here, but uh, definitely feel free to do that. Give me one second. I guess it was at the bottom here. So we're going to go up to the top right here because it's just so interesting. Now, this particular article was from October 2023, okay? So I want you to know that date because they're going to reference uh, when this crime initially happened which was on November the 11th, 2022. Look at that, 11-11-2022. They love those days, don't they? So on the 11th, all right, this is when everything popped off. And they're just giving an example, right? Because there's they're, the, other, the lawyers just said, no, they're going to get all their money back. Well, they're going to get 85% of uh, what they had in dollars, on November the 11th, that's what's going to happen. So first of all, they're not are they're not even getting a hundred percent of the dollar amount that they have. But look at this opportunity cost. All right, we're just going to consider Bitcoin because Bitcoin has really been doing its thing lately. So they stated, you know, on November the 11th of 2022, Bitcoin was trading at seventeen thousand dollars, and of course, this article is from October 2023. At that time, it crossed the $30,000 mark. Now, think about where it is today in March. And we're like at the $67,000 mark. These people have lost out on $50,000. Think about it. $50,000 per coin. And FTX is going to only give them 85%, right, of the $17,000. Isn't that crazy? And then they said, that's enough. That's good for them. Well, talk for yourself. Speak for yourself. You know, but that's not right. Because this is how people are creating generational wealth. And I think that uh, they they just uh, should restore these people in whole, you know. And then let's look at this. So the last thing I want to talk to you guys about, which is really exciting, that's going to kick off this weekend too. XRP is so on a move. I'm so pumped up. So XRP Gold, Co Gold Coast Conference 2024 is actually happening in the Gold Coast, Australia. And I have to tell you, I love the fact that they picked a place called Gold. Why? Because anyone who's anyone, especially if you're a financial institution, they know that XRP is the new digital gold. Currently right now, Bitcoin is kind of holding that title because it has like, this is the first, it's the first, right? You know, it's the grandpa, right? You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, we all know XRP is going to um, supersede Bitcoin and uh, XRP will be the new digital gold. So it's just exciting times right now to be at the forefront of everything. And I just want to share with you some exciting things from the XRP Gold Coast 2024. That's why I said the time is now, you guys. This is not financial advice, but the time is right now. The time is now to get in on this, this the new way of life. This is the, the future currency, you guys, you know? So if you're still invested in fiat and you got all your money in fiat, personally, I feel bad for you because we're going to be moving away from that very, very soon with digital currency. And so look at this right here. It's so exciting. Look at all of these amazing companies here. We have Ripple. We have Merlin. 
I mean, we have everybody here you could think of. I mean, seriously. So go take a look at it. It's called xrpgoldcoast2024.com. I am not there this year, but I will be there in 2025. You can definitely bank on it. And so look at this. It's so beautiful, too. It's, Australia is absolutely gorgeous, right? So we're going to look take a look at some of the speakers. And then we'll talk about what they're discussing. Because that's probably, probably even more exciting part. But... Right here, the speaker is the keynote speaker, John Deaton. And he is actually running for Senate in the state of Massachusetts um, against Elizabeth Warren. So if you are in Massachusetts, please vote for John Deaton. He is so pro crypto. He is pro our freedoms. He is pro us having wealth. And anyone at the top, they know this is the time to be able to create that wealth. They want to stick us with you know, CBDCs and UBI, that's for broke people, that's for poor people. And uh, so we're just really excited that John Deaton is actually representing us in the crypto community and being our voice, you know, uh, to Washington, D.C. So definitely let's help him win, everybody. I believe that they also have fundraisers here uh, at this particular event. And then also just go to his website. You can uh, definitely uh, uh, go ahead and uh, submit your donation to his campaign. I'm sure they'll be grateful for it. But yes, and, and for those who don't know who John Deaton is, he is actually the Ripple lawyer who's been helping us out with his SEC case. So really excited about him. He's been doing major, major things. Also, they have Jay Cambo. So that's pretty amazing there. Crypto Airy for people who are into podcasting. She's an excellent, excellent podcaster. So definitely subscribe to her channel. But yeah, just definitely come on here and check out everything. Here, here comes some of my favorite people, the bearable bull. You know, he's been very silent too, you know. Uh, so maybe he's in with the Riddlers when they said, shh, that's how you know things are really about to explode because it'll just go silent. And he has gone silent, okay? So I know clearly he's doing things in the back end, like being a guest speaker at events like this. But it's just really exciting to know that he's not doing his podcasting every day because XRP is about to explode. And so, uh, but yeah, so those are some of the individuals there who will be speaking. And let's talk about what they're going to be speaking about. Again, last year I was able uh, to attend two crypto conferences virtually. Uh, I'm already scheduled to attend another one uh, next month. And, you know, like I stated, I will be attending these in person going forward because this is where we are headed. So if you're trying to get ahead and want to be one of the pioneers, you know, for the future, this is the time you want to make sure you're surrounded with like-minded people in the room. And so let's look at this. Let's see right here if I can make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So 75%, we could do 100. Okay. <laughs> so again, I like how they have the mayor of the Gold Coast, Australia. He's going to be there to welcome everyone. Innovation for Gold Coast. I love it. You know why? Because he probably is going to see some great things at this particular conference that is going to be wonderful for him to implement in the city of Gold Coast. Okay. And so then, of course, they have details for those who will be participating in a code -thon. Then, of course, they're going to kick it off for Crypto Area and Dirk for X Spectre, building the metaverse with AMA. Bill Morgan, regulation in Australia. And please know that regulation is coming all over the world in 2024 and 2025. Everything is going to, in my opinion, be fully implemented by November 2025. And really, I should even say my opinion. You know, if you're just following Fed Wire, Fed Now, ISO 200, 2022, all the dates are the same, November 2025. Okay. Uh, John Deaton, 75K strong, decentralized justice. That's right, with the XRP Army. We are definitely a very lively group. I really like us a lot. <laughs> okay, and let's see here. More, They have more sessions about the future, about the future verse, ready verse. Everything's a verse, okay? Metaverse, you know? Building crypto solutions for a world without borders. So for those who don't know, we are going borderless, all right? Uh, we're going borderless, you know, they uh, gone are the days where you will have to, you know, pretty much have a passport for everything or have to get visas for everything. Like, I just don't even see that being in the future. You know, they're going to have everything digital ID, everything in the system. So doesn't matter what technically country you go to or maybe they'll change the name to territories. That is, that's going to be very fascinating, too, to see how that that's going to evolve as well. Districts, territories, I'm not sure. You know, that's going to be very interesting. But so this would be a really great uh, session to attend. 
a Web3 ecosystem building, leveling up in the decentralized playground, navigating the future of Web3 gaming. So I have to tell you, and again, this is not fin financial advice. Definitely make sure you get into the ISO 222 coins, this particular uh, bull run, okay? Uh, also, not financial advice. Maybe gaming is going to be really great for you to get into. AI is going to be good for you to get into. I, I'm, you know, it's going to be very explosive. And also, they're talking about this being the greatest Bitcoin having ever. So you want to make sure that you're into the correct um, industries when it comes to your crypto that you're getting into. Um, because the time is now, you all. This opportunity is not going to last forever. By the time most people figure out about it, they're going to be priced out. That's just what it is. They're going to be priced out. And some people are talking about they're going to be priced out by 2025. So this is your time to do the research. Do your research. Everyone is different. You may not be interested in gaming. You may, you may be more interested in, um, you know, a banker's coin or more interested in AI. Whatever it is for you. Figure out what works best for you and let's get it done, okay? Because you do not want to have any regrets later. People will talk to you all the time. For those who knew about Bitcoin, they will tell you that they were presented with an opportunity to purchase Bitcoin for like 10 cents or $10 and they didn't do it. And now we're sitting at almost a $70,000 Bitcoin per coin, okay? So get it done, people. <clears throat> Awesome. And then, of course, it goes on to uh, day two as well with some of the same speakers. And so, like I said, I'm really excited about the Crypto Aries session with the Builder Series. These are people that I know. BC Backer, a blockchain backer, right? A bearable bull, Crypto Aries, Tori West. Uh, that's going to be a really good um, segment there. And then Shin uh, Morricone, okay? The New Age of Digital Ticketing. Uh, let's look at this. Ross Edwards, Conversations on Financial Services Technology. That would be something I would love to attend. Uh, Dr. Poinka, Fractionalized Financial Services. Another one, because I'm really big into finance, into um, fintech, insurtech. So I love stuff like that. All right. This one right here, everyone should definitely attend. The Matt Donovan and Bill Morgan, Fireside Conversation on Tokenization. Tokenization is expected to be about $16 trillion, yes, with a T, dollars by 2030 and you know before people say oh my gosh 2030 is so far away i don't think so people we're already in 2024 we have seen how fast these last four years are going we're about to wrap up the first quarter like you know that's something you don't really, really have time to wait you have to get in the game now get ramped up you know get your knowledge up uh and just just go with it you don't even have to be a hundred percent you know an expert you just need to get in the game start attending all of these workshops seminars conferences you know uh go ahead and subscribe to everyone's um podcast start to research these different white papers you know uh, go to github do the, what you have whatever you need to do in order to get ramped up because you do not want to be left behind and so just definitely uh check that out but man go coast is just so amazing we're so excited and I just want to go ahead and end it there because it's been a minute since we did the weekly wrap up. So we'll get back into that. We have to because we're we're literally in a Bitcoin having territory. OK, we're about 31 days away. They're estimating that the Bitcoin uh, season is going to start on April 19th. So we are actually 31 days away from the Bitcoin having. So we have so much to talk about. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to talk about April because we already have a whole lot happening in April. But um, yes, definitely make sure you like, subscribe, share our channel to your friends, to your family, because this is a time to create that generational wealth that you need uh, to carry you through. So thanks again, and I'll see you guys next week.